Hello and welcome to another episode of Grange TV, yet another episode. This is our fourth one for today. Um, again, at the helm, we have uh, David Roberts, TAFE extraordinaire, Mr. Robert Whitaker, fighter, <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle Noak, also fighter from Australia, but Kyle was a pioneer in the game, in the Australian game for a long, long time. Uh, thank you for joining us. No worries. Uh, do you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. Um, hey, wait, have you retired? Have you officially retired? Because I read on your Wikipedia that you to saying you're coming back. Uh, yeah, I did officially retire a couple of years ago. Um, since retiring now, uh, training fighters uh, back in my gym at Nike Martial Arts and Sunshine Coast has, has kind of given me that fire again. Um, not training so much as well has allowed my body to heal now where I feel strong and fit again. I actually feel better now than I did when I retired. So... Um, yeah, I, I feel good enough to get back in there. I feel like I'd, I'd, right now I would beat my, the old me. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fighter at heart. I still have that drive and that, that desire to get back in there. So, um, yeah, one more. Why not? Okay. Um, what, what, what made you go, I want to retire? What was the thing? Um, the, basically, my body was hurting everywhere. Uh, shoulders. I, I'd find it hard to throw a jab and bring it back. It sort of just fall down. Um yeah, that just I felt slow. I felt sluggish in there. The desire to be in there wasn't there anymore. So um, yeah, I, I just felt like I was behind the ball and behind everyone else. So I just thought it was time to retire and and, and let my body heal and then reevaluate what I do from there. Um, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have retired. I probably should have just said, look, I'm taking an absence from the sport. But um, at that time, it was straight after a fight, and I just felt uh, I couldn't compete at that level anymore, and uh, I thought it was time. What what do you attribute that to the wear and tear? Like, how did the wear and tear get that to that stage? Uh, I, I'm not one to really rest in between fights as well. So it'd be straight after a fight, I'd have a week or two off of laying around playing video games, eating ice cream, and then straight back into the uh, gym to train again. So I think that, and also not listening to my body. Um, back then, I was training probably four or five, sometimes up to six times a day. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the best for my body. So where were you? Was this at Jackson's? This was at Jackson's. Yeah. So I'd do a couple of sessions at Jackson's. Then I'd go do a pool session. Then I'd go out to Cowboys Ranch and do a couple of sessions with them guys out there every night time. So, you know, it, in hindsight, it probably wasn't the best for my body. But at that time, I thought it was the best thing to be doing to uh, uh, help my skill set get better. But um, you know, I, I after I retired, and especially after hanging around uh, Alistair over him a bit. Um, he's been a big influence on me since I retired, helping me out with stuff. But uh, it's, it's choosing quality training over the quantity of it. What? Uh, so you left here when to go to, to Jackson's? I think I left 2008, or probably before 2007. I left Australia to go to Jackson's. Um, yeah, I just felt... It wasn't like I was getting the, the, the wrong training here or anything. I just felt like it was time for me to move on from here and go to America. And especially at that time, there wasn't too many Australian fighters in the UFC. So it was hard for the UFC to kind of look at us guys here in Australia and say, all right, we're going to pick this guy or, or even look at Australia for opportunity. So, you know, I felt like back then my best shot was to go to America and, and you know, try and kick the door down and, and get in the UFC. And you did very well too in... in in, in, especially for for the time, you had some. I watched your fight with um, Hector. I watched it live. Oh, that was a crazy fight. Yeah. Fuck. Did you see that fight? <laughs> yeah. Were I mean, you there? It was a nightmare. I wasn't there. I thought he killed you in the first round. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I was fucking packing my stuff up and I was like, oh, the police are going to come. Yeah. Oh. But how how did you survive that? Yeah, that was always because he plan. doesn't look like he doesn't hit hard. No, <laughs> he looks like he's like a bloody train. Yeah, he's a uh, scary dude. Yeah, and he was. He was scary. Um, Especially back then, he had that like that invincible aura. Oh, yeah. Man. He was knocking everyone out and hurting everyone back. <laughs> yeah. So, um, But they're the fights I loved. You know, I always loved the opportunity to get in there against the best guys. But, uh, yeah, he was a scary guy. But our plan the whole time was we knew he was going to come out strong. We knew he was going to come out and try and knock me out in that first round because that's what he'd done to everyone else. So we knew if we could push him to the second and third round that his, his confidence might drop and his gas tank's probably not going to be there because he was carrying, back, especially back then, he was carrying a lot of muscle for that uh, 84 kilo bracket. So we knew if we got him to the second and third, if we could just withstand the first round. How, like, I, I know you just explained it, uh -huh. but how did you go, that's the plan? Uh, like, do you get what I mean? Like what you just said then, how uh, did you go, yeah, he'll probably gas? 
well, we obviously spoke about it with the coaches back then, Dan Higgins and a couple of other coaches, and we and we knew he'd come out strong. We knew back then, the, and my coaches knew I could take a beating, I guess. <laughs> so they were like, you know what, he's going to come at you hard and fast, keep your hands up. Um, and they were just like, yeah, Cole's good for a couple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Tony Green, said, Tony Green said to uh, the ref, Steve Percival, before the fight, he's like, look, Kyle can take a beating, all right? Don't stop the fight early. <laughs> if he looks like he's in trouble, just please let it go. Please let it go. And so he's like, all right, I'll give him credit. I'll see how it goes. You know, I can't promise anything. And then, uh, yeah, thankfully, Steve said he got to a point and he remembered. And then, uh, yeah, I was able to uh, come back in the second and third and take Hector to a draw. When, in that first round, because that, would you, is it fair to say, like, I think you had you had a couple of wars with George Sotoropoulos. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But would you say that as far as like, because like we are, you know, we knew who you were and whatnot, but would you say that that Hector fight was a like a big time stamp for you in at the time? Like in that having that quality of athlete that you took him to a draw? Like, yeah, it was, you know, it was a, um, I guess it was a moment for me to realize that I could pursue the sport further and I knew. Because back then, Hector was a name and everyone's, you know, everyone was thinking about him, everyone was talking about him. So um, he, it was destined for him to either go to UFC or Bellator. Pride, or Pride at the time, yeah. yeah. So I knew that if I could get a win against him, that I'd be, um, that, that would propel me into the path that I wanted to go. But, um, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it had to get there first and I had to you know, get in there and fight him, which was a scary thought back then. Were you intimidated? No, I've, I've never been intimidated in a fight. Um, I think that the stronger the opponent, the, the better he is, the more it makes me want to win. And I'm quite the opposite where if it's, if it's a guy um, where I'm supposed to win, I find it hard to get that motivation to fight. So I always lo- used to love being the underdog. So the bigger, the better the guy, the better I felt. Were you uh, almost out at any stage? No, not really. Um, there's one point where I was backing against the cage and he hit me with a big hand, a big right hand or a left hand because he's southpaw. Uh, and, and I went to step back and my foot hit the bottom of the cage and I fell over. But um, no, at no point in the fight was it ever out. Uh, I didn't feel like he was doing too much damage with his punches. I was able to block most of them anyway. Where were they landing? Uh, just like on my forearms and stuff like that. A couple hit me on the head. Um, I could feel them. They were hard shots, but none, none of them that were sort of ringing my bell. But they definitely felt hard. Like I, I could feel them as they hit me like... Fuck that one hurt, you know. But you know, you know yourself, Rob. When you're in a fight, you don't really think about it. You don't feel it till after the fight. So yeah. it was, it was, a, it was a one of the best fights, like Australian fight that I've seen, like outside of the UFC or anything. But no, nah, even fuck, even including, I, I thought <laughs> I think it was just a fucking mad fight. Yeah, like I, I thought it was just a great fight. That that's just me. Good, good on you. Yeah, thank you. You know, like that was that was. Yeah, he was. He really was the boogeyman of the era. Like, yeah. Yeah, of that of that like scene at the time, like, and he did, and and he did well in the UFC too. Yeah, absolutely. Like he, at welterweight, he he ran through some people there, like some pretty big names. Yeah, I, I think just uh, for Hector's case, man, it was it's probably just a little bit too late that he that he did make his run in the UFC. You know, he probably spent the prime of his lo- of his career in the Bellator, where he probably didn't get the, as big as names as he could have. Um, you know, he probably could have been a world champ if he had his run in the UFC in his prime. You um you grew up in Dubbo? Did you grow up in Dubbo? Yeah, in Dubbo, New South Wales. What what was that like? Uh, it's the industrial <laughs> and, industrial and cultural <laughs> centre of the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, yeah. uh, it was different, you know. Um, we, I grew up playing rugby league, rugby union on the weekends, uh, basketball, uh, fighting with all the local guys back down there. Um, I think we almost had a fight nearly every weekend. But it wasn't like a brawl or, or, or a bad fight with people hitting each other with sticks or anything. You know, it was just a couple of guys having a fight every weekend. Um, just for fun? Just for fun, yeah. It was country town, country kids, got nothing else to do. You know, it wasn't it was, bad, but. No, it was good. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but. It, it was different. There wasn't, for our mentality anyway, it wasn't no one kicking anyone on the ground. It wasn't, you know, it was two guys standing up. And then if one guy got beat, everyone would break, jump in and break it up. It was just what we did, you know. And then uh, same as when I played football. We used to have this motto on our team, we're either going to win the game or win the fight. So if I got to a point where we started losing the game, we had our hooker, Marty Cameron, still the best mate of mine now. We'd say, all right, Marty, blow it up. 
and he'd get pack in for a scrum and he'd drop to a knee and uppercut the other guy and then <laughs> it'd be an all in brawl and we made sure we won the fight if we were losing the, the football game at that point. So you were a kid that got into a lot of fights growing up? I got into a lot of fights, but I never started a fight. But I'd say I'd be easily pushed into a fight. Yeah. That counts, eh? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. started fights, Kyle. I never started. <laughs> you started <laughs> fights, mate. That's cool. That's called starting fights. No, I, love, I, love it when I love it when a guy goes, no, yeah. I, I never started. I got into a lot of fights, but yeah, never started. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, being a dubbo, you know what it's like. You've got to stand up for what's yours. And uh, then you moved. When, when did you move to Queensland? I think I moved to Queensland in 2001, maybe, or 2000. So you would have been, how old are you now, 37? I'm uh, 39 in a couple of weeks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So a little bit older, man. I'm 38. Yeah, so I'm old. Yeah, old, mate, yeah. old. So, so it's not too late for you to make a run either. Fuck, mate, I can't fight. One more. <laughs> I can't fight. One, I can't one fight. more. One more. <laughs> one more. <laughs> yeah, I'll one do more. one more. Has he had one already? No, I haven't had, <laughs> had anything. I, I don't even want to fight. Um, yeah, it'll, be, it'll be horrendously. It'll be like an assault. Um, so you, you moved to Queensland. Yes. And then when you were in Queensland, you, you started training with integrated martial arts? Yeah, when I, when I moved to Queensland, <laughs> it's a funny story to everyone. When I moved to Queensland, I met up with a guy called Tony Green. Uh, he was a bodybuilder at the time. And I didn't really hear much about mixed martial arts before then. And then he asked me to come along and train with him. Wait, so you didn't go there to fight? You just moved no, to Queensland? No, I just moved to Queensland to get our dubber. I had okay. enough. I wanted to see change. I wanted to go out and see what it's like to live on the beach and... See what the girls look like on the beach. Um, what did you, what were you doing for work? Uh, back then, I think my mum owned a. Um, in Dubbo. Like, no, I'm in Dubbo. Was I doing for work? Yeah. I was working on the railway back home in Dubbo. So okay. Just swinging a sledgehammer all day. And we we both also worked on the railways. Oh really? We did. Yeah. It's a good job, huh? No, I loved it. Great job. I loved it. <laughs> I think we were the team, and we travel off and do uh, eight days on, six days off. And I loved it. I think our rail, I think our railroad experiences are different. No, oh. but if you lived in if you lived in Dubbo and they took you out of Dubbo, it'd be yeah, it'd be yeah, fun. we went all across yeah. the country, New South Wales, fixing the tracks. So. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't doing it. Yeah, no. So but, that uh, that sounds awful to us, but yeah. but yeah. No, so that was that's my thing. I loved swinging the sledgehammer all day, and they try to get me on a machinery, and I just deliberately drive <laughs> fucked up so they wouldn't put me back on it. So uh, yeah. And then your mum moved with you to Sunshine Coast. Yeah. So. I I actually originally moved up when I was about 16, 17 to the Sunshine Coast and I tried to stay up there. I think I lasted about six months up there before I moved back home to Dubbo. I said, fuck it, I'm going back home. Um, Went back to Dubbo and then I moved up in 2000 and my mum had stayed the whole... She moved up with me originally when I was young and just stayed up there because she loved it. Oh, and then smart woman. Yes. And then I was dumb, so I went back home and then, uh, yes, tried to stay in Dubbo. got a job on the railway. I uh, basically just got sick of traveling around and, and, and doing that, and I wanted to go back up, so I moved back up. And, uh, yeah, and that's what I was saying. I, I'd, I'd actually run into Tony Green, a friend of mine who was bodybuilding, and uh, he said, yeah, do you want to come do some training with me? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to go do some training. I want to get big and strong. And uh, he said, yeah, bring a uh, shirt and a pair of shorts. And I was like, yeah, of course I'm going to bring a shirt and a pair of shorts. I'm going to lift weights. But I didn't say that. I was just thinking that. And then he took me to the gym, and I walked in. I said, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, where are the weights at? I said, hey, Tony, what are we doing? He's like, oh, it's mixed martial arts, you know, it's this, this. And he told me all about it. I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, I'll jump in and have a go. And, um, yeah, I jumped in and had a go. Had you done any it. martial arts prior to that? I'd done a little bit of Taekwondo when I was a kid um, to the point where I got to yellow belt and they started doing three-step sparring or something. And I said, fuck, this is enough for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, obviously, uh, a little bit of boxing and growing up as well, like in and out of the boxing gyms, just playing around with friends and... and learning what we can my dad was a bit of a boxer as well so he taught me a bit growing up but um yeah that, that's about the extent of my my martial arts background before i started training but uh yeah first training session i think i jumped in and they taught me a couple of moves and i submitted a blue belt i think my first go and it wasn't even a conventional submission i just took his back and i pushed his head forward and pulled his arm back like this and he tapped <laughs> <laughs> After that, I was hooked. I was like, I love this shit. And uh, yeah, from then, they, they couldn't get me out of there. And you just started fighting? Yeah, just uh, it wasn't long after I started training that they asked me if I wanted to have a fight. And um, yeah, I, just, I said, yeah, why not? And it was a couple of weeks, probably about four or five weeks after that, I had my first fight. I uh, won that fight and never looked back. Yeah. Did, um, 
How, how old were you then? Sorry. So I, no, I no. was 22. I think it was, it was no, my first fight was in November 2002. And, and what weight division did you jump in at? 77 kilos was my first fight. Okay. 75 kilos it was actually my first fight. And um, yeah, no sauna, no nothing. Just dieted down from about 80 something or other. Lost all the weight. Weighed in on the same day. Um, no, it wasn't allowed to wrap our hands at all. Just the gloves straight over the top. And then we fought in uh, Tropaderos, Tropa I think it's called, in, Gold, in the Gold Coast, a nightclub. And we used to laugh about it because we swear if you jumped high enough, you'd hit your head on the roof. It was like upstairs in a nightclub, like a conventional nightclub with a low ceiling and a ring in the middle. So it'd be like fighting in here. It'd be just like fighting in here, yeah. If you jumped <laughs> high enough, you'd hit your head. Fuck. Yeah. So how did, how did your relationship happen with the crocodile hunter? So... Um, uh, a few years later, I, I'd, we'd met up with Dan Higgins. I think it was right before my first fight, and he started coaching us as well. And Dan had already been working at the zoo. And at that point, Steve had f discovered mixed martial arts and was looking for someone uh, to bring onto his security team as well, someone he could train with. So he's looking for another f fighter or someone who knew how to handle themselves. And it happened to be at that point, I was looking for a job. So Dan Higgins said, uh, you know, Steve's looking for someone if you want to come in and do it for an interview. To do what exactly? Uh, to be in his personal security. Like a bodyguard? It, originally, it was, it was to do the security of the zoo, but then also while him and his family were inside the zoo to escort him around the zoo and make sure people didn't grab his kids and hassle him and stuff did, like did that. Did that happen? A lot? Oh, yeah. People would always come up and try and you're like, ah, oh, Bindi, try and grab her and pull her in for photos and that. And you could imagine being a three, four, five-year-old girl, you know. What the fuck is wrong with people? Because <laughs> so it doesn't occur to me to do that. No, I know. And then, like, even Robert, the little, he was, he was one or two at the time, people were trying to kiss him and grab him. And Was, was he big, like, in the media back then? Yeah, he was big. We, we used to get, um, like, uh, all the celebrities from America were coming over to visit him, like uh, Brad Pitt and all that, so we had to escort them around the zoo, all kinds of people like that. So, and people um, are just retired today. Eh? They just, yeah. they just, because that doesn't occur to me to go grab someone else's kid like oh, that. I know, but um, they had to have somewhat of a normal life. So there was a couple of us who used to watch the kids, and the kids sort of just hung around the zoo all day and done their own thing. But it was kind of our job to, to make sure people weren't grabbing them and stuff like that. And and so then what happened from there? From there. So uh, yeah, so I went in for my interview, and um, Steve's like introduce himself and I said good day and I sat down with a table with him and he's like right you got the job now let's talk about fighting and then after that it was we talked about fighting for a while then the HR department come in and they're like oh yeah you know I'm um, Kyle you're gonna have to wear a uniform and this and Steve's like no he's not he's on my personal security he's not doing anything like that and they're like oh so they threw that paper away then they're like uh, he's gonna start on x amount of dollars he's like, no he's not he's doing this and this and basically just the HR said well then you don't need me and they left and then the next day I, I started at the zoo and yeah, started. Uh, we used to train at the zoo every morning, and then we'd hang around the zoo, and make sure. Like you'd roll right. with him in that. Yeah, he actually built us a cage at the zoo to train in. He, he loved it that much. He, uh, at one point, he's willing to throw his whole career away just to have a fight. And then we came up with the idea of having a, a charity fight, uh, which still wasn't okay with his producers and all that. <laughs> and they, they still didn't want it. But uh, I remember he made me go to the movies with him once. He rings me, we had radio, so he radios me, he said, Kyle, meet me in the compound, I need to talk to you. Right, I so off I went. He said, we're going to watch a movie. I'm like, all right, cool, what's it, what's it called? He said, it's The Pacifier with Vin Diesel. So it's like a kid's movie. He's like, yeah, yeah, I want to fight him though, so I want to go there and size him up and see what he looks like. So we go into town and watch the <laughs> was movie. Was he a big guy? Steve, yeah, he was, big, he was six foot two and a hundred and something kilos. Really? Yeah. That big? I always yeah. thought he was like a nugget his top. Yeah. That's what everyone thinks, but he was he was a big man and strong. Yeah, he looks like he's fucking yeah. strong. You'd have to be. Wasn't oh. he like a rugby player as well? Growing yeah, up? he used to play rugby league growing up. Um, was quite good. Apparently, he could have got um, progressed to the next level. He, he actually could have went a couple of ways. The, the story they told me, he said he was good at rugby, um, wasn't so good at running, but he could tackle anyone. He was great at surfing and wildlife. And of course, his wildlife, his passion was wildlife, so that's the path he chose. But he had sort of career options in, in other ones as well. Was he a good dude, like a awesome guy, very straightforward? Is he um, how you see him on the? How you, yeah, exactly how you see him. Is he taking the piss? No, no, he's exactly like that, right? And I, I haven't told anyone this, but the reason why he used to say "crikey" and all that is because he swore. 
So he can't swear on TV when a kid's show. He can't be like, oh, look at this fucking crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be, crikey, look at this crocodile. And so he trained himself to say crikey and all that instead of saying, fuck. Uh, <laughs> <yeah. coughs> Sorry, and so you went to watch a movie? Yeah, so we went to watch The Pacifier. <laughs> and it was one of the worst movies I ever saw. But um, there was the whole idea was that him to size Vin Diesel up for a fight. And then Does he, Vin Diesel know? I don't know. I don't know. Because he originally wanted to fight Wesley Snipes. He would fucking smash Wesley Snipes. Yeah, I but think. he found out Wesley Snipes was small. So yeah, like, that's no, why I'm saying you'd smash yeah. him for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so after that, he's like, no, it's good. It's Vin Diesel. Let's go. How small is Wesley Snipes? Um, he's five foot something. I don't know. Like met, a little guy? Him, yeah, I met him once at Whole Foods in Albuquerque. And, and he's little? He's like, tiny. Yeah, a little guy. Read that, uh, it's hard to see. So he smashed yeah. This tall boy sitting down. <laughs> 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 when I'm standing up. Like a child. Yeah. But he'd smash him then. Uh, Steve would? Yeah. It wouldn't I even don't be know, close. Wesley, Sni Wesley Snipes has got skills. Yeah. But, Steve, yeah, but he's a big, Steve, tough dude that Steve wrestles crocodiles. Like, I mean, Wesley Snipes would probably bash me, but I don't yeah. think he'd bash a fucking big fucking dude no. like that. But he was, um, no, funny story about Steve. One day we're sparring in the gym and he's just like, you know what? I'm not feeling this fucking technique. Like, I'm not feeling the technical. What if someone just fucking comes at you swinging like, ah, like you're in a pub brawl or something? I'm like, yeah, you know, you might get a couple shots off, but the, you know, if you be more technical, you get, you're going to win. And he's like, all right then, I'm going to come at you hard like a pub brawl and you do the technique. How heavy were you? Uh, I was still fighting at 77, so I would have been 80-odd 80, 80 kilo and he would have been 100 and something. And I went, all right, no worries. So he'd come at me swinging. I could hear him. Whoo, whoo, and I just sort of sit back and then hit him down the middle, hit him a couple, <laughs> hit him a couple of times. With, with what? How many ounces of gloves? Uh, 16 ounces of gloves. Yeah. Uh, dropped him to a knee. He'd get back up and go, all right, let's go. Go again. And bang, hit him again. And then after a while, he'd be like, all right, I, I can see it now. Let's go back to technique. <laughs> 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 yeah. Crazy guy, man. He, and uh, we're, by the way, you know when like there's fancy dress parties, uh -huh. I always go to Steve Irwin. You do? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I don't know if I want to see that. <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's, you don't. You don't. You've seen it. Nobody <laughs> should. <laughs> Nobody should have to see. Because it. it's easy. It's easy for me. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Because you look exactly like him. Because <laughs> they look exactly the same. And uh, and so then you, you so you were working there and you did you so you moved. And you're still working there and you moved to Albuquerque. Yeah. I started, uh, I guess I started transitioning to move there. It was about a year after Steve had passed. Um, oh, that does what, so he passed and then you moved? Yeah, it was about a year later. I, I, I continued working at the zoo. I started increasing the time that I was going to America back and forth. Um, yeah, it's because I could go for three months at a time. So I'd probably do a couple of months. And I started off like a, a three or four weeks in America, back in Australia for a couple of months. And I'd do... You know, increase it more and more to the point where I was doing three months over there and two months here, three months there. And then I got to the and got to the point where I was like, well, I'm spending most of my time in America. I've, I've created good friends there. I have a great team over there. I think I'm going to move over there. So I um, decided to leave the zoo and, and move there permanently. Would Had he have not passed, do you think your life would have gone a different trajectory or would you have just moved anyways? I, would you have like... I, yeah. I think I still would have moved. I don't think I would have stayed there as long. I think I would have spent more time like I was back and forth. Um, yeah, but, you know, Steve being so passionate about everything in life, like animals, no matter what he'd done, he was passionate about it. And he didn't like anyone that didn't have a passion. But to be around that and, and, and feed off Steve's, just his passion for wildlife would feed my passion for mixed martial arts. So to, so to be around him and feel all that energy that he was giving off, you know, it was, it was a phenomenal thing. So I think I would have always been drawn to stay between here in Australia, uh, here in America. But, um, yeah, after he passed, it really kicked me in the butt to, you know what, if I want to make the best I can out of this, I want to move to America and give it, you know, 100% shot. I'd rather go there and say, you know, at least I tried than stay in Australia and say, oh, you know, maybe if I went to America, I would have had a better shot or anything like that. Did, what was Jackson's like? Jackson's was phenomenal. I, um, I loved it over there, uh, especially back in the day when when it was uh, the, the gym was full of guys like Keith Jardine, 
Rashad Evans, John Jones, Cowboy, Leonard Garcia, George St. Pierre was there. You know, it was just a great bunch of guys. We'd all get together and, and help each other and share techniques and, and be there for each other. And it was, it was just, you know, it was, it was so good to be around. Has it changed immensely? I think, yeah, the, the gym obviously has changed. Um, it's no secret what's going on over there now. Like, there's Cowboys done a podcast with Joe Rogan talking about how bad it is there now. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of left right when all that began. began so what, um, what, like, let's say, for example, what, what exactly is being spoken about? Um, you know, I think it's just... Uh, they've, they've kind of opened the gym up a lot now where before it was just all the pro fighters and then they'd have their day classes in between and then it, it kind of opened up to where anyone from the public could come in and train with the pro class. So people kind of found their own little cliques within the gym and the gym just expanded. It just got bigger, become more popular and everyone wanted to come to Jackson. So with the, the gym moved, when I originally went there, it was a tiny little place on the highway. Uh, Greg had his office right next to the ring, which is right next to the mats. Um, then him and Mr. Winklejohn merged to another gym, and it was still a decent. It was a bigger gym, but it was were still, they separate gyms? They used to have separate gyms, and we used to go between the two of them. Um, yeah, then the guys that said we'll stop our guys traveling between the two gyms, we'll merge and, and make a bigger gym, and that was where I guess the best of the training was when we had that smallish gym. It was still pretty big, but it was small enough where we all kind of stayed together, and there wasn't so many little cliques within the group. And then once it moved to a massive facility now. It's like a big million dollar facility where anyone can come. They've got two or three or four cages, you know. They've got mat spaces over here, mat spaces over there. They've got a chiropractor upstairs, the offices and shop fronts and all that. So it's a massive facility. And I guess being so big that then everyone sort of forms their own little groups and it's not as much as, as everyone melding together and form that strong bond and team. So you see guys like Cowboy sort of drifting away and starting his own gym out, out at his ranch and you see John having his own little team and then other guys coming in and bringing their own trainers and stuff like that. So I think... So effectively, I spoke to Overeem uh -huh. and he was saying that he's just got his own crew that yes. he goes with. Yeah, Alistair always brings his own crew. Um, he came to Jackson's, he uses Greg, uses Wink, all the training guys, but he also has his own stand-up coach there, his own massage guy, his own chiropractor, and, and he also brings in training partners as well. But, um, yeah. So he's just kind of using just the, the, the space, the yeah. area. And, and I'm pretty sure Alice has actually left Jackson's as well now. I think he went up to wherever Curtis Blades is and he's training with his guys yeah. up there now. Yeah. Yeah. But um, Alice is a great guy, man. I got a lot of respect. He seems for him. really nice when yeah. a few times I've spoken to him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last year he flew me over to Bali to help him prepare for a camp over there. Um, when I had my knee surgery after one of my fights in America, he was the first one to call me up and say, hey, man, look, if you need anything, let me know. I'll come around and play some FIFA, we'll, you know, whatever, you want some food or something, just let me know. So, um, yeah, ever since then, I've always had a lot of time for Alistair. Good guy. And so, so then the, the gym blew up. Mm -hmm. There's all these little factions. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what Cowboy's talking about? Yeah, that's what <laughs> Cowboy's wild. Um, I guess that's what he's talking about, like the gym's not the same as you know, people coming off the streets, they just got to pay the rent to stay there and they can train with the pros and all that. Um, yeah, so Cowboy's a different guy. He's like, uh, I mean, he's wild, but he also, he has his own little group as well. So don't get me wrong when I say Cowboy was always, he was there with us, but he always had his own little team anyway. But he always contributed to the gym and he always came back to the gym. But um, now he started his own thing out there. He has his own um, strength and conditioning place. He has his own gym at the ranch. Uh, he's doing very well for himself, so he sort of, he was still bringing all his guys into training. Like, he'd have a, probably about 20 guys staying at his ranch. He's he, got a bus, eh? Yeah, he's got, he's got a bus and a couple of vans, and he just built these big dorms out there for everyone to stay in. Um, the life of a superstar. Uh, <laughs> but he would always bring all them guys into training at Jackson's, and then after him and Wink fell out, he's like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to stay out here, and I won't bring my guys in, and I don't want to train with your guys, and... Let's just leave and the that. two of them fell out. Yeah, Winkle, Mr. Winkle John and, and and Cowboy fell out, but uh, Greg still talks to Cowboy, and I think even for the last fight, Greg was still helping him out. So uh, is Greg Jackson and Winkle John are they friends? Yes, yeah, they're still they're still um, friends. But uh, you know, 
it's, it's hard to talk about. Cowboy's his own person. Mr. Wiggle John's very uh, straight down the line, you know, uh, strict. This is the way it has to be. This is the way things are done. Um, yeah, but Cowboy's more wild and, you know, fuck it, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Ain't no one tells me what to do. Fuck this. I do my own thing. Yeah. And so now moving forward, you'd go back there to prepare if you're going to take another fight? Uh, I think I'd stay in Australia. Um, one thing that I did as soon as I retired, I, I come home and I'm saying like a couple of weeks after, I'm driving down Sunshine Coast down the, next to the beach. I'm like, fuck, you know, I, I spent so much time away. I forgot what this feels like to be home, you know. I was like, this is where I should have been the whole time. Maybe I shouldn't have spent so long over there, especially towards the end. I should have come back. Um, and it, it was like... It wasn't until I'd done that that I realised that's what I was missing in my life. It was, uh, yeah, just that fact of being home. So I'd, if if and when I do come back, I'd love to stay home. And, um, yeah, I'd fight and, and train out of here and hopefully come down and, and train with Rob and you guys down there. Um, I've already been down and trained with, uh, I know you train with him as well, Craig Jones. You know, he's a phenomenal <laughs> jiu-jitsu guy. So. He's all right, isn't he? <laughs> he's, he's all right. He's got a few tricks that he does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'd love to stay in Australia and, and utilize all the talent we have here. And, and 2001, 2002, 2003, around that time though, it was very, very different scene in Australia. Yeah, it was, like, you know. Um, ridiculously different scene than it, than it is today. Yeah, yeah it even, barely existed. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No one really knew about it. And, and even then, the, the UFC is not what it is today either. You know, it was more of a, um, especially in Australia, it was like an underground thing. I mean, we used to have to get all the VHS cassettes sent from overseas like the pride ones got sent from japan the, the ufc ones got sent from america so yeah it was it was completely different the way it is now back then you have to t explain to people what you do and stuff like that and, and even the fight purses weren't uh, maybe in japan in pride and that was big but mm. the fight purses weren't the same it wasn't like like you could make a living like now if you're number 15 in the world you can have a gym mm -hmm. and people know what it is and you know, it's not like back then it was harder, much, 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 yeah, much harder. Back then, most of the fighters had jobs back then too. Um, yeah, everyone still had to do something to, to make a career. What What's your hardest fight to date? Mm, hardest fight to date? I have a couple of fights for different reasons, but um, obviously Hector was a hard fight, but it was just more withstanding that first storm. Um, How much was the difference between the first... Round. Oh, massively. I could just, it was at a point in the, in the second round where I just felt him just sort of deflate, like, like he'd given all he got and he had not, not much left. And um, that was, I was able to turn it around, pick him up, take him down, stuff like that. So that fight, um, Andrew Craig was another tough fight I had here in Sydney, I think it was. I, just, I was doing well, I was beating him. I jumped on his back, tried to rock up a rear naked choke. I squeezed with my legs too hard, my knee popped out. Yeah, I remember um, that fight. Yeah, so, and after that, you know, every time I try to dig in and throw a big right hand, my knee would sort of fall out from underneath me, and he sort of clipped me on the way down. It looked like he was dropping me every time. But, um, yeah, it wasn't really dropping me, just my knee, would, my knee would give way on me every time I threw a punch. So that was a hard fight for me to push through as well, um, not being able to strike like I wanted to, and every time I'd fall down, he'd jump on me, and then I remember he was, had long hair at the time, and he kept on getting caught in the back of my throat, and, hair in my face and stuff like that before they made him tie it back <laughs> at one point I had his back and he was on top of me and his, all these hairs in my face I couldn't breathe and I could feel it going down the back of my throat and Ugh. yeah it wasn't yeah. good fuck <laughs> and you you had a, a a tough run now the last few fights yep what what's what's that like for a fighter uh, it sucks um <laughs> oh it's not a wonderful <laughs> feeling thank you <laughs> uh it was terrible um but my heart wasn't in there you know as bad as it is, it, it wasn't that bad because my heart wasn't in it. Um, my passion was kind of dwindling then. I, I just had a baby with a, of a girlfriend that I'm not with now. And it kind of, it was a bad time for us back then as well. We were kind of trying to figure out what was going on. So, um, and again, I'm in America training and I've just got a newborn back home. I'm missing her. I want to be back home there. And then I'm fighting with my ex on the phone and we're going back and forth and you know, I just wasn't in a good headspace. So I'm just trying to get these fights out, trying to make this money for the for the baby, you know. And um, yeah, that that my heart wasn't there, nothing was in there. So as as, as bad as it was, like it, it hurt after the fight, but in the end, I'm like, you know, fuck it, just give me my money. And um, yeah, and, and that's was that the last fight on your contract? 
No, I still had more fights. I still got a couple of fights left on the contract, I think. But I'm, I'm pretty sure now if I come back, they'd make me have a tune-up fight somewhere else. I don't think they'd put me straight back in there. I don't know. Um, it'd be hard to take someone back off three losses. But um, we'll see. I'm in talks now with my old manager in America. We kind of had a falling out, but now we're sort of back working together again and um, trying to find something for me now. All right. Did you watch the, the fights on the weekend? I did. I watched the last few. Um, and I missed Diego Sanchez. I wanted to watch his. <laughs> Fuck, uh, it was a good like performance, while, mate. I know. I heard what was he it. like at Jackson? Fucking crazy. Like he really is crazy? He's really, really crazy. I remember one time I'm in the gym by myself and I can hear someone chanting like, yes, I am this. Yes, I am that. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I walk into where the change room are and Diego's having an ice bath and no one else in the gym is having an ice bath. He's got his headphones on. And he's listening to this uh, motivational stuff that they're telling him to say. And I'm like, holy shit. But, uh, and another time, I remember the first time I went to Albuquerque, actually, we're running in the mountains and Diego's got these big boots on with these big fucking springs on the bottom. <laughs> with springs on the bottom? Springs on, like they're like, uh, like this, shaped like... Oh, yeah, oh, like yeah. The yeah. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, oh, man, they helped me run. They're fucking... Rah, rah, rah. I'm like, all right, man, whatever it takes to get you going. And then he's running the mountains. He's like, yes, this mountain loves me. <laughs> Albuquerque loves me. I feel your energy, Mountain. Yes. <laughs> oh, this dude's crazy. Is he a good dude? Awesome guy. How is awesome. He, how is he running with the group if he had springs on he his got, feet? <laughs> my, my, like, <laughs> we're all running a bit ahead of him. And he's like, dun, 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 trying to keep up. And oh, it's just, harder to run with those things? I guess so. But he, <laughs> he, he thought it was helping his legs do something. Like that. And that's the thing. He's always got the latest gadget. This is it. This is what's going to help me be, take the next level. I've got this thing. It fucking rolls my neck out like this. Uh, or I've got these beads that I wear here and it sends energy up here. And, <sighs> he's good, good, oh, but on the ground, eh? Yeah, really good on the ground. Really aggressive. Um, especially back in the day, right when he won the Ultimate Fighter Series, he was like on the ground. No one wanted to go on the ground with him. No one would touch the ground with him. But... Um, yeah, he went through a part where he started coming down and his last couple of fights, he's been coming back and just dominating people. I mean, yeah, he did have a quiet spell for a while, eh? Yeah, he went through a bad spot, but um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm going to ring him up and find out what he's taking now and what's his latest thing because he's he's doing something right, right? What What did you think of, let's start with, I don't know, any fight, anyone? Did you want to start with any particular fights, anyone? No, no not particularly. I, I only managed to watch the main card. Right. But um, right, let's start with Cabrera. I like him. <laughs> what did you, you think of that I, I I walked in the last bit of it as well. I walked in where Cody was just throwing, biting down on his mouthpiece and throwing, and, and um, Pedro, was it? Yeah, they were both just going back and forth. Just weathering yeah. it and then throwing bombs and weathering. Yeah, which is probably not the smartest thing to do after you've had two knockout losses prior to that, you know, but... Um, apparently he got headbutted or something, saw red and just wanted to, just wanted to get after him, so... Um, I guess his emotions took a hold of him. He know. he is a very emotional fighter, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He seems to be that way. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if you can be. Like I said, having two knockout loss, losses yeah. in a row, you know, you got to think, shit, I can play this smart now. I need to sit back and, and think about down. my career. Yeah, because uh, three knockouts in a row is not good for the brain either. No. So, um, you so know, he, he should have sat back and played it smart and, and outboxed him because he's got the skill. Yeah. He's one of the most skilled strikers in the division. If he just sits back and uses those hands... But he just keeps on getting drawn into these slugfests. Yeah, for, for no real reason. That's he really yeah, that's is right. quite emotional, though. Yeah. Like yeah. You see in every he's fight. Quite, he's got good skills, too. Yeah, he's got good hands and good skills, good footwork. He's, he's got great head movement and, and foot movement. Like, yeah. To, to, to watch him not use any of it, Yeah, such a waste. Yeah, I know. Can I borrow some? But yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me half of it. Were you at the... Is, is it Kalatov? Were you there when... when there was one of the Russian dudes who used to train with Khabib went to, he was training out of Jackson's. I'm not sure what was his name. Oh, it's, okay. it's not Kalidov. I'm going to find it. Right, I. Fuck. No, but he was up like, for in the UFC. He he was a guy that beat that guy by suplex at Vince. Oh, um, Rustam Hobulov. Yeah. yeah, it is Hobulov. It was Hobulov. Hobulov. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was. You know, were you there with, when he was yeah, there? Yeah, I was there when Rustam was there. He was... Um, yeah, he'd be the same one and be like, oh, shit, don't touch me. You know? like, Ugh. He would not let him get close to you because he'd just grab you and pick you up and suplex you. But the nicest guy ever. 
Really nice oh, guy. He'd pick you up, slam you fifty times in practice. Say, hey man, you must come to my place. I'll make you food. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> the nicest guy ever. I still talk to him now every now and then. Because uh, he he actually took a loss, eh, recently. Yeah, I think he lost not long ago, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I remember when he came on, he looked like he was like gonna do a Khabib on everyone. Yeah, he um. He, when he was training in America, he was in great shape. He's in great training. And then I think he got held up with visa issues when he did not be able to get back into America. And then his training started to suffer and stuff like that. So I think uh, that's what may have stopped him. And then they started that big gym over in Russia, the American, other uh, Russian Eagles or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So I think he started getting tra uh, training better again. And, and, you know, I was hoping that he'd win his last fight. Cause he's, he, he really is. He's such a nice guy. Um, he, he just there to help you out, but um, yeah, just don't let him touch you. That was the, that was the deal. Don't let him grab your legs. Don't let him grab your upper body because he's gonna throw you. Cause he he looks like he's a fucking gun grappler, right? Like yeah. just strong. Yeah, man. Yeah. The body locks he does. When he yep. gets a body locks and he just bombs people. Yep. That yeah, I was, I was just curious about him. What do you think about the the rest of the of that card? What was the who who, who else? The, um, the fight I, I, I came in on, yeah, it was Ben Askren versus Robbie Ooh. Lawler. What would you think of that? Um, man, I was impressed with Robbie at the start there. He, he, the way he handled Askren, you know, he's got a, I thought he killed him. So did I. I was oh, shit, this old man's going to die on <laughs> TV in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Credit to Askren for surviving that. Oh, he's tough, man. He's fucking tough. And, uh, yeah, and, and Robbie, I don't, I don't think Robbie was out when he got choked, but... Um, yeah, Askren took a beating at the start, and but then you you see Askren Askren start to come back, and if you watch any of Askren's fights, that's what he does. I mean, he once he gets hold, of you, he stays on you. So um, I don't think the fight outcome would have changed. I still think Ben would have won at that point. I think if Ben just sort of kept on grinding him and and and, and keeping Robbie down, he would have won. But um, yeah, it's just a, it's, it sucks for Robbie. You know, um, he was cool about it and all, but you could tell that that choke it wasn't on. And um, people say, yeah, he might have went out though and came back. But you know, when, have you ever been put out to sleep by a choke? No. Never? No. Um, when you I always tap. You do? Yeah, yeah. every time. I, I've, I, <laughs> 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 I, I've tapped before as well, but like no. in training, but it, people have put me out and uh, you kind of wake up like a, you're in dizzy, like a bit dizzy and a bit euphoric and you're kind of happy and stuff. And Robbie wasn't like that. You know, Robbie stood straight to his feet and he was, he was very coherent. You see the ref pick up his arm, but... Yeah, like, he picks up his arm and then Robbie sort of drops it and gives him the thumbs up real quick. I didn't see the thumbs up. Yeah, I saw the thumbs up. I had to rewind it and watch him. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love Robbie Lawler. I'm a big Robbie Lawler fan yeah. as well. But I, I do like Ben Askren. Then I was like, fuck, was he out? I wanted to know if he was out out. And then I started thinking maybe he went out and came back when Askren shifted a little bit. And then I was like, no. Nah. Because if he went out, you would see signs of him going out. Like you kind of get a little shaky like this when you yeah, his out. knees would have kind of yeah he would have been a little bit and then when nice. he stood up he wouldn't have been so quick to stand up and he wouldn't have had this you know yeah so i, I give it to robbie i'd 100 percent think he wasn't out at all and i, I did I, I watched that part and and he did give him a little thumbs up well um when when i was in the when i was a welterweight robbie uh -huh. Lawler was the one dude that terrified me <laughs> <laughs> he just he just looks mean yeah and he just looks violent yeah <laughs> like, he's gonna come and Try and take your head clean off your body. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, he just, he just had such a violent. It's going to be a war, eh? With yeah, you? he just oh, had 100%. such a violent presence. Yes, and I was like, I don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that. It's How crazy were these fights with uh, McDonald? <sighs> yeah, it was straight out war. That I reckon fucking took its toll as well on Rory as well. Oh well, yeah, um, to be honest, I don't think Rory's actually been the same since that fight. I think, um, and he had two fights. Mm. The, yeah, the I, other one was like the bad, bad one. Mm. I, I think I, I don't. I'm very much with you there. I don't think Rory was the same. Has been yeah. the same since. Because Rory was a he's a still is a phenomenal athlete, but um, yeah, he just never fought the same since since the Robbie fights. Have you had a war like that where you've um, been like yeah, you know, like Rory looked like. There was no adrenaline no more. Like the everything yeah. was cutting through the adrenaline. Like yeah. he was like boom and getting like yeah, hit. you could tell things were hurting and stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I've, I've had fights where the adrenaline's not there at all, you know, and, that, and that's where you're kind of you're very coherent on what's going on. Usually, when I do my best, I, I, I when I look back on the fights, I can't remember nothing. I, I vision like a single light coming down on me, me and my opponent, 
and that's it. I can't hear the crowd. I can't see the crowd. I can't do anything. But the more aware you are of everything, or for me, the more aware I was of everything around me and the people cheering and stuff like that, that means I'm, I'm not focused as much on the job. Yeah, your adrenaline yeah. hasn't. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm picking up everything else, and then when you're getting hit, you're like, "Fuck, that hurts," you know, like because you, because you're not focused as much as you should be. But I've, I'm trying to think if I've had a massive war. Um, Did you well, the the fights with Sotopolis? Were they backwards forwards fights? Yeah, they were back and forward fights. Um, they were more fatigued for me than than you know nothing hurt. He's not like. Uh, George is a phenomenal fighter, but it's not like he's he's a great striker. You know, everyone knew that he was going to try to take you down and submit you. He did work a lot on his boxing, but um, yeah, for me it was it was just I I got fatigued in the fight with him. And the first fight we had it was it was an elimination tournament where we fought. I, I had to end up fighting twice in the same night, but I drawn George the first first fight of the night and it went two five minute rounds as a draw, and then it went an extra round. And then I won the decision, and then I had to fight another guy called Byron Donnelly after that fight, uh, which I won that as well. Then the second fight we rematched over five five-minute rounds, and he and he beat me then. And that was my last fight at welterweight before I went up to middleweight. If you come back, back, where are you going to fight, you reckon? Middleweight. I don't want to cut too much weight. Were the cuts hard for you? Um, no, the cuts weren't especially hard for me. Um, the biggest problem for me after a weight cut is always putting the weight back on. Um, I, I found... Once I got to uh, welterweight and then straight after the fight, if I tried to have another fight not long after that, I'd, I'd, I'd be nowhere near the same size as I was. So I'd feel like I'm small, you know, to the point where I'm thinking, fuck, I can make lightweight here. So, um, yeah. Do you I, have that feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, are you, I'm going to give lightweight a run? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm one sandwich away from super heavyweight. <laughs> Shit, I'd probably even like to come back at light heavyweight or, or heavyweight even. How heavy are you right now? Oh, right now I'm only about 90 kilos. But for me, it's, it's the... And you, want to, <laughs> and you want to come back to light heavy? Light heavy or heavy. No. The bigger I get, the better I'm feeling. Don't do it. <laughs> I see these heavyweights and they're lacking the skill. They're all just big brawlers these days. But can you get to heavyweight? They can get away with that. it though because they have that. legs the size of like, tree trunks. <laughs> hey man, the skinny leg guys do all right. John Jones has got the skinniest legs I've ever seen and he does all right. He's a big dude. He's tall. He's, he's a very big guy. He's, a, he's thick up up top too. Yeah, yeah. He's like he's a massive guy. Yeah. But skinny legs. That's yeah, but like <laughs> it's proportional, right? Like his leg no, is as tall as I am. No, he's 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 got long legs. His calves are like my forearms and I don't have big forearms. He's got long legs. Oh, mate. long, yeah. Like his his calf muscle is like the length of my whole arm. <laughs> like Yeah, he's big dude. Yeah, super yeah. reachy and long. His brother's massive too, eh? Yeah, they're all big. They're Huge. all massive guys. Because guy when, when I saw him in real life, John Jones, he's like, I was like, fuck, this guy's massive. Yeah. Massive guy. And he, you know, I think I think the, the, the reach of his hands and arms make him feel bigger. Yeah. Because <laughs> he just, it just like looks like he's got... No, but he is a big guy. Like, Oh, he's, yeah. He's just yeah. so much reach. He's just so all-encompassing huge. Yeah. Like, yeah Did, um... What was the second Woodley? I was actually wanted to ask you guys this: the Woodley and um, what do you call the fight? The Woodley and Usman, Usman fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. what do you guys think of that? Oh, um, I thought Usman uh, Usman fought his heart out. Like mm -hmm. he he came there ready to fight, and he was gonna he's gonna crawl, cry, blood, scream, and do whatever he needed to do to get that win, or mm -hmm. to at least try. It. He's giving it everything. To, to to meet like Woodley is a phenomenal athlete and mm -hmm. I I think um after after his last fight with Darren Till mm -hmm. I, I thought Woodley might go down as one of the best ever and just stay there. Yep. But um the Woodley that turned up for the Usman fight wasn't the Woodley that turned up for the Darren Till fight. It wasn't no. the it wasn't the, the Woodley that's fought up rocked up for, for Maya or, or Thompson. It was the Woodley that showed up for McDonald that time. Yeah. I, I and you know what, not to take anything away from Woodley like you said, he probably would have went down as one of the best. But the reason why Woodley does so good is because he's got that phenomenal wrestling. Like he's got, he's, at that point, he had the best takedown defense in the UFC. So he was able to stuff everyone's takedowns, keep it on the feet where he can use that explosive power. Um, and where he wasn't a high volume puncher, so he'd sit back, bang, 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 out, bang, 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 out, you know, and then look for that big shot. The thing with Usman is he's just that bit better of a wrestler. So he's able to take and Woodley long down. too. You yeah. can hold them against the cage. Yeah, long arms. Very good at that cage yeah. wrestling. Yeah. So he, he's just he's in my opinion, you know, he was just a different. He was just a better wrestler. He was able to take it down, control Woodley against the cage. So the, 
amount of body shots he threw on Woodley was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was just a- able to out-hustle Woodley and take Woodley out of his game as well. And for someone like Woodley, when you're, in the, you're the king of the heap, you know, and, and someone comes along and shuts down everything that you do well, it's kind of, you know, I, I guess it sort of took him out right out of his game. Also, I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Woodley has ever been like a super in the moment adapt to new game plan sort of guy. Mm. You know what I mean? I think he, he's, he's always been good when he's the one pushing his game plan. Yep. And up until that point, like, oh no, up until like every fight that he's had to adapt or he's gotten shut down or his plan's gotten shut down or his opponents are implementing their game plan, mm-hmm. he's had a little bit of trouble. Yeah. So one of the things that's surprising for he, his build and his skill set is how, how he um, gives up the center of the cage and mm-hmm. how easily he's able to go like, against the cage, mm-hmm. which obviously helps him when he blasts forward as well. But you've seen him get stuck there a few times, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and he's a fucking monster. Yeah, I know. Um, especially for a wrestler, it's weird to watch him go back like that. But um, Nate Marquardt finished him right, yep. that, right, pushed him against the cage, massive elbow, dropped him. Yeah, it's very strange to see for, for Woodley. But like Rob said, you know, it's probably that inability to adapt in the ring in the cage you know that probably gets him un- uh, unglued sometimes and Us- Usman's very good at just putting the pace oh. on and just keeping it on phenomenal athlete yeah. man he was just he was there to fight yeah he wanted that belt mm. right or wrong he was leaving with that belt him and Colby's going to be interesting because th- they do the same <laughs> yeah. thing They're the same guy yeah I just think Usman's way better at than Colby Way better. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. No, nah, honestly, you know what? Because I, 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 I would think that at the uh-huh. start, but then I see the, they've had the common opponents and whatnot. Uh-huh. And After seeing Colby fight uh, RDA uh-huh. the last time, oh, dude, the pace he set as well and that, that wrestle, that wrestle box, wrestle, wrestle, mm-hmm. wrestle, and the pace, it was, it was fast. Yeah. Like, it was fast. Because we were, we were there, eh? We've, that was when you fought. That night. And, um... That was just that was such a high volume wrestle mm. fight. Like there was no, yeah, he just, it was so because because RDA kept getting back up, yep. or, or stuffing his takedown outright. Whereas uh, Usman was wrestling, scrambling, but then eventually he he would get Woodley down and hold him down. Whereas like the Covington fight was just like RDA would get back up every time yeah. he'd get back up, and then he'd just do it again and do it again and get sh- like stuffed and get back up and do it again and like that. That level of work rate and cardio was and, like and Covington's crazy to not, see. not small. Like you know, when you no, see he's a big guy. Yeah, when you see, have you seen him in, in real life? I've never met him in real life. I just I've seen him in comparison much to other thicker. guys I know. Yeah. yeah, much thicker than you think he yeah, is. Yeah, right. <laughs> like I still don't think he gets up from Usman though. Maybe not. I don't. I, I, I was uh, you know when they had that confrontation at the uh-huh. back of the thing. Like I was standing like right, mm. like right behind him, uh-huh. and um, right behind Usman. And like I was looking at Colby, and I was because from TV he looks not as big as Usman. Yeah, right. But when he's there, he's like a big dude, man. Yeah, for right. for thing, I was um, called I was called a pussy from that little clip at the back as well. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, I just saw that. Yeah, <laughs> I was called a pussy because like when they started mouthing off, I just slowly <laughs> backed away. Oh, you should have just bit yeah. someone. <laughs> no, and like, all my friends just called me, "Oh, you're pussy that time." Like. Yeah. Things out of mouth and I'm like, fuck you, I don't want to be involved in their shit. Yeah, why are you going to get involved in someone else's beef? Yeah. I do the same thing, step back, watch it from a distance, like, all right, go for it. Uh, uh, man, yeah. I'd like to see the fight. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah you go. just want to fight, go. I but I'm not going to referee it, I though. I'm going to watch it from back here. I want no part in this beef. Uh, and end up with a fine or something like that and then not oh. being able to fight. And how do you think then Askren would do with Usman? Because Askren's a, like, Another level wrestler, yeah. but I, his his hands don't look the best. No, I know, but um, that's a tough one. I, I like Askren, man. I, I like him a lot. Um, you know, one of my good friends, Tim Kennedy, trained with him, and I asked straight away. I had to ask Tim, Tim, what was he like to train with? He's like, man, he's one of the best grapplers I've ever trained with, and Tim's trained with Aaron. Tim's one of the best grapplers I've ever trained with. So, for him to say that, you know, I was, I've, I've been an Askren fan for a long time, and then when he said that, I was like, oh, okay, he's definitely legit then. But I don't know, man. The way Robbie handled him in that first couple of minutes, I think if if Askren goes up against a great wrestler, I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll turn into a wrestling match, and, and Askren may win. I don't know. But I still Askren think has to make it into a wrestling. Oh, match. has to. Yeah. Because after the, he don't have the hands, of it, 
you know, at these other leagues, he can, he can hang with the hands and stuff like that. But to come in the UFC where everyone's good at wrestling, everyone's good at striking, everyone's good at everything, you know. So he has to implement that wrestling game because he's not going to strike with these guys. But it's an interesting matchup. I, I still think I'm still going to go with Usman if they fight, Usman and Askren. But uh, it's a fight I'd like to see. You know who I'm a big fan of, man? Always been a big fan of as a fighter, uh, Masvidal. Oh yeah, Master, yeah. He's he can fight, man, and he's yeah. fighting Darren Till. Yes, that's and right. Askren wants the winner of them because uh-huh. Covington is fighting Usman. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Masterville's tough, isn't he? Oh, very, so, very good, man. Oh, phenomenal, and just the way he receives the fight, the way he moves, the w- and and the way he throws his strikes is, is you can tell he's a high level, high IQ fighter as well. He's not just a brawler; he's he's, he's there. Well, this fight with Darren Till is going to be interesting. Yeah, I know, because Darren Till's... Uh, and that's, I think Darren Till takes this one out, though. He's a big guy. Yeah, Darren's a big guy. He uses his range. He's an intelligent striker. Um, yeah, I, I think Darren Till takes that one out. But Masvidal can grapple. Ooh, yeah. He's a good wrestler. Good yeah. grapp- I'm sure Darren Till can grapple, too. Yeah, and, and I think Darren Till will be a lot better at his wrestling and grappling after the last after he fought Tyrone Woodley as well. Yeah. He's, he's got to know, and that's, it. That's, that's the plan for anyone that fights him now. Because he's he's knocks out everyone else and, and outstrikes everyone, so you, you know I find it funny that like, people that that um that comment on Till's uh, grappling. Uh-huh. It's like, did, did you see that shot he oh. took from Wooly beforehand? I know, I know. Like, I don't I don't think it was exactly I don't think it was grappling at that point. No. <laughs> like, like that shot he walked into it, uh-huh. and Woodley threw everything he had, and like. That was such a big shock shot. Yeah. Like that was huge. I don't think grappling had anything to do with it. <laughs> it was a big shot. It was very, so very, very big. big shot. It was yeah. So big. And uh, you know the other thing. Just I'm not. I'm not saying that this has happened with Woodley and take anything away from Usman. But even when you see fighters, like not not that it matters. Anyways, if you lose, you lose. You win, you win. But you think any anything goes wrong as well. Like you were saying, like. You're arguing with your mm-hmm. partner, whatever, and you. I, I say it more like sometimes you know we're talking to people. People go, you know what he did wrong, and I think you tell me what he did wrong, mate. <laughs> yeah. You fucking tell me, mate. Yeah. I'm sure he's gonna come here and yeah. fuck while you're bagging groceries and take yeah, the piss out of you. Right. People, they have, they have it was no anything idea. could be anything. I remember I had one fight. It was one of my first fights in the Elite XE, and I couldn't eat food. I made weight easy. I couldn't eat the whole week of the fight. I was that sick. Every time I put anything in my mouth other than water, I'd throw it up straight away. Um. Yeah, so it's, I remember my friend Joe V. Senor had to carry me back like to all the interviews and stuff I had to do with it. He'd go, right, we're at the door now, fucking walk in there like a man, sit down, do your interview, come back out, and I'll help you get back to the room. So I'd have to straighten up, walk in, do my interview, come back out, and I'd near die coming back out, and he'd catch me, and we'd walk back to the room and lay down again. And that happened all the way up until the weigh-ins, and when I weighed in, I started feeling a bit better, and then I got some food into me, went out and fought the next night and won my fight. But it could have went the other way. I could have stayed. I was going to fight now regardless of anything. I'd travel all the way from Australia to America and I wanted to fight. But, you know, that could have went, ended really bad for me. I could have went there all depleted and, and no energy and got knocked out bad. But um, luckily I was able to finish it in the first round. What were you sick with? I have no idea. We were, it were, we were fighting in um, Corpus Christi in Texas. So we'd left Albuquerque, arrived in Corpus Christi. I think I may have got food poisoning or something. I don't know. But, um, is Corpus Christi's tiny, eh? Yeah, it's a small place. And they had an Elite XC card they there. They had an Elite XC card there with Kimbo versus Tank Abbott as the main fight. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, so yeah. But it's tiny, tiny, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's pretty small. We didn't get to see too much. I remember going out afterwards, I went out with the Diaz brothers and Gilbert Melendez and that, and Jake Shields, and we went to a strip club and had some food at the strip club, and then they went out in the car park and play fighter for about an hour, and then we all went home. Yeah, actually smoking that, weed while then. That actually sounds awesome. Yeah, it was actually yeah. Because I that, that was my first fight in America, like for a big organization. So I was kind of um, yeah, I was just sitting back watching it all and thinking how fucking cool everything was. Yeah. Did did you um did you watch then the Jones and uh, Smith fight? Yeah, I watched the watched the whole fight. What did you think? Um, you know, it, Jones is a phenomenal athlete. Um. What I know is that John, he, he he has a different game plan for every fight, every fight, right? He goes in the fight and says, okay, this guy's a good wrestler, I'll out-wrestle him. If he's a good striker, I'll out-strike him. 
Um, and I think with Smith, he just done everything better than Smith. And, and not taking anything away from Smith, I think Smith was just a bit, sh you know, like a bit shy of John and, and didn't really do what Smith could have done to him. You know, I think, um, yeah, John just sort of took him out of his element and just outworked him everywhere. But uh, you know, Anthony Smith not get not taking that win like he did. You know, that's goes to show how much heart he has and and how much respect he has for the sport to not just sit back and, and take a win when he got needed illegally. Um, yeah, I take my hat off to Anthony Smith, man. He's a tough guy. Fuck yeah, I saw that. That was crazy. That, that took fight. a lot of punishment. Oh yeah, a lot like, of punishment. When I was watching him, uh -huh. like, <laughs> copping shots in like the fourth and the fifth, I was thinking like, dude, you're going to be sore for like three months. Oh man. Like, yeah. when, when Jones was stomping his feet uh -huh. on the fence, I was thinking like, <laughs> Dude, like, you know, put shoes on tomorrow, man. Dude, just stop. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah, Jones is, he's, a, man, he's a freak. I remember when he first come to Albuquerque, you'd catch him in a submission one day, and then the next time you'd, like, uh, next time you'd roll with him, you'd never get him that submission ever again. Like, he'd learn from it straight away. And then just, that's how quickly he progressed in the sport. Because when he come, he just got to the UFC, so he wasn't the big name that he is now, and he's just, yeah, just everything he sh anyone showed him, he soaks it up, takes it on board, trains for hours at a time. Smart training, though, just going through his combos. He has a book and he goes through all his combos and, you know, he's always training smart. Go. Is it true about him not training? No, he trains. He, he John, uh, he was, well, I understand his point of view, right? He was thrown into the spotlight from a very young age. Uh, here, you're a world champion at 23 or whatever he is. Here's money, here's everything else, you know, and... and no one really guided him in that direction and he, he went out and partied no one any other young person would have done i mean i'd hate to see what they'd done to me if they gave me a couple of million dollars in a, a world title when i was 23. i probably wouldn't have lasted till i was 24 years old i'd probably be dead but um yeah no i give him credit you know he i i never bought into the thing that he didn't train you know people where oh, he doesn't no. train he trains hard He's he's at the gym. He he tra he trains. So he trains a little bit with the classes. Like he does them. He comes in, and then people don't think he trains because sometimes he'll come in a bit late or he'll be in there early. He'll he'll do the class, and then they won't see him for the rest of the, the rest of the day while there's two or three more classes on. But then he'll come in at night time, like at nine ten o'clock at night, with his pad with Brandon Gibson and other guys, and then he'll just work for like two hours straight, just practicing, 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 making sure everything's perfect, making sure his technique's flawless, everything. So he, yeah, he puts the work in. It's just that no one really sees it there. So everyone's like, oh no, John's been out partying, which he does. He goes out and parties. But um, yeah, he, he puts the work in, don't worry about that. No, oh, I, I never ever like, you know, bought into that shit. Like, cause yeah. you don't, no one's like, cause the stuff that he does, it's not like he's fighting some dude and he's just out muscling him just cause he's a gorilla. Yeah. Like he's yeah, proper. He's really highly technical. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, Very technical. And even the like, I know he came up wrestling and everything, but if you don't do the stuff that he does mm -hmm. all the time, you can't keep that sharpness, you know, in no, his wrestling right. and that. You don't, you don't have that match with Daniel Cormier and uh -huh. that, and you're like, oh, I didn't train. Yeah. Like, I trained for six weeks. No, yeah. you have to have been on. And even like to implement a game plan, you, you need to have the skills first because... Mm -hmm. You know, I can go, well, you know, if I can put Brock Lesnar on his back, then he's going to have trouble. And you go, good luck, Fab. Go, go, go do yeah. See if you can do that. <laughs> you know? Good luck doing it. So you've got to have the, the the ability to execute the game plan. Then you've got to practice the game plan. Yes, yeah, right. So it's not like you would just train a couple of oh, weeks no. before. No, no. The only fight where I saw where he didn't train too much was the first fight with Gustafsson, where he kind of took it lightly and he was out partying a lot more than he was training. But he was still... The days that he was there, he was still working his ass off. He's still training. He watches fight footage two or three times a week. You know, they break it down to every little aspect of the of the thing. And the thing with John is he can watch that fight footage and then go back and like it's like he remembers it all straight away. You know, he remembers what the guy does. So it's, for him, I guess by the time he's fought, he's already probably already fought the guy a hundred times in his head already. You know, he knows everything that he's going to do. But um, yeah, he's a freakish freakish athlete. And as a as a fighter, is like a, as a like as a training partner and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Did you train with him a lot? Yeah, I trained with him a fair bit. Um, he actually used to bring me along to all these strength and conditioning sessions, his pool workouts, and he introduced me to swimming in the pool for my cardio and stuff like that. Um, he used to take me everywhere. But uh, he's a phenomenal fighter, 
because I said athlete earlier, he's not a phenomenal athlete, he's a phenomenal fighter. He can't do anything else but fight though. He can't play basketball, he can't play football, <laughs> he, can't do, he can't swim hardly. Uh, yeah, anything he can do is fight. But uh, he does that. And wrestle well. too, bro. And wrestle, yeah. I mean, anything involved with like wrestling. Combat. Jiu -jitsu, combat, yeah. yeah. Do you need anything else? Put, yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> you put a ball in his hand or something, say, John, throw that. We'll go over that way. But he's, um, and, and as a human being? Great guy. He's yeah. just wild a bit. Yeah, he's just, he, you know. Young guy got young a lot guy, of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah throwing in the spotlight. Um, yeah, all his brothers are at pro athletes. But, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's always been a great guy. He brings him, when he used to be sponsored by Nike, he'd bring him massive boxes of thing and give it to all the young up-and-coming fighters all the time and make sure everyone had all the gear and stuff like that. So, yeah, he was a great guy. I had a lot of time for him, a lot of respect for him. When, when uh, like, do you, when he comes out here, when he's been out here, do you see him? Um, when he came out here, the last time he came out here, he called me and I was doing the UFC fight week down in Sydney. Um, I, I couldn't get a chance to get across to him, but um, I still talked to him. I spoke to him probably a couple of weeks ago because um, we both shared the same manager. So I was telling I was telling John to tell telling John to kick Malky in the butt for me and get me a fight. But um, yeah, no, he's yeah. We still keep in contact with him. We still talk to him. Who do you think is going to give can give him a run in that light heavyweight division? Oh, man, um, and honestly, I don't see anyone beating him in the light heavyweight division. Um, I just think he's leaps and bounds above everyone. I think the only way someone beats him is, is catching him on the chin. And if you go that route, I'd say um, the dude with the hammer on his chest. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he'd really? have a good chance. What about that Johnny Walker guy? Uh, I just don't think he's refined enough yet. You know, I think John would pick him apart and, and find all the holes in his game. That's another thing. Even if like you try to you try to bring the power to Jones, mm -hmm. and, like you try to hurt him like that, Jones has exceptional wrestling. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Great like, wrestling, yeah. And then he'll just and he's very smart. He's very smart. Yeah. He's not going to try and bomb with a dude that can outbomb him. No, that's right. He'll, he'll he's, not, he's not going to try and bomb unless a dude. he can outbomb the dude. You yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> unless he can put yeah. it on the guy. Yeah, yeah. like so he like, did to Glover and that. Yeah. So he'll yeah. just take you down and beat yeah. you up. He's been in there with big guys that throw power shots before. You know? <laughs> I mean, he knows how to handle them. So, but like I said, that's the only way I see someone beating him is, is catching him. But um, it's catching him is the thing, man. He can he'll throw an elbow where everyone else is striking. Uh, fist ranges, you know. He'll hit you with an elbow. Or he'll hit you with a kick. That's what something. I thought in his last fight. His distance, yeah. And his distance control, range finding is yep. flawless. Yeah. Like you, it's granted he's like a specimen. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. he's built for what he's doing. Yeah. But um, but yeah, he's just it's it's just it's just great. He really does have a body perfect for fighting though. Oh right? yeah, because like I'm pretty sure if I trying to create that body <laughs> in the game, it wouldn't let me. <laughs> be like, <laughs> That'd be the cheat code, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just he he can elbow like exactly what you said before. He can yeah. elbow at people's punch range. Yeah, like, he can just and, and he, uses he them well. Grabs people's hands. Like, yes, and like, rolls the elbows in from yeah, the hands and controls the hands. He's, Wins the hand fights. He wins. He wins all the fight. He wins the striking. Wins yeah. the hand fight. And wins those, the those those knee strikes, like yep. with his rear leg, like that distance, is so hard. Like if I if I were to try and knee strike someone with my rear leg, I'd be almost <laughs> kissing the dude. <laughs> you know. Whereas Jones does it. It's like across the room still. Yeah. You can't get in. He's still out of range. Wow. Yeah, you yeah, can't. One, of, one of my fighters come in after that fight. He's like, oh, John done this thing. He done like an inside leg kick, and then he kicked him with his rear leg, like across the front of his knee like this. He said, can you show me how to do that? I'm like, yeah, oh, when you're 6'8", come back. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay, okay. And this guy's smaller than me. He's fighting, <laughs> he's fighting a light heavyweight. He's fighting big guys. I'm like, come on, John. Yeah. And it's, it's um, that's, that's funny as well because sometimes you hear, like, you hear the commentators when they're thinking they're explaining what John's doing. And so I'm not bagging the commentators. It's explaining what he's doing. But yeah. it, it almost makes it sound like that's what you need to do. This yeah. is what you need to do. Right. And I think, come on, man. <laughs> Fuck. You need to get a gun if you're yeah. going to fight him. Yeah, you you know? just need to do this and step in on John and take him down or yeah. hit him with this. Yeah, I heard it a bunch of times. Like, yeah. you, you see that? That's the problem. <laughs> I'm like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I, think I think there's a bit more than that. But uh, Did you see that interview Mike Perry done where he's like fucking... He's like, yeah, my, corner, my corner's telling me to go, go. You need to go, Mike. You need to get in the range. You need to go, go, go. And everyone's telling him, go, Mike. He's like, fucking you go. He said, I'm <laughs> tired right now. This guy could knock me out. What do you mean just fucking get in the range and go? 
I was like, yeah, he's a wild man, but it, it just related to me when he said that, you know, like everyone was saying, this is all you have to do, just do this. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, easy, just do yeah. this. And it, yeah, it's fucking easy for you on the outside. But Were you at Jackson's when Romero went there? No, I was actually back home in Australia visiting, I think, I, I don't know what time it was, but no, I didn't get to train with the old Romero. He's another fucking monster. Specimen, isn't he? Yeah. Beast. He's not that Who's strong. Right? Rob says he's all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's all right. He's I wouldn't say strong. specimen. <laughs> he's, not, he's not that strong. Solid. Uh, B plus. Well, he looks strong anyway. <laughs> he's fit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He looks fit. He's another dude that sc looks scary. Scary as fuck. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Uh, I, I will not age like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anyone that does. Have you, have you seen him recently? 40-something? Hmm? 42, 41, 42. 42. Shit. Have you, have you seen him recently? Uh-uh. <laughs> So big, is he? So, because on that, he was on that show, Come that on, reality man. TV yeah. show. Come on, how? But dudes, dudes is genetics. Thick, yeah. yeah. Heaps of genetics. Heaps of ge <laughs> 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 An injection of genetics every day. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a monster, man. That dude, Absol absolute monster. Yeah. Um, and so for for you, what happens next? Well, you you got a gym up here on Sunshine Coast, uh -huh. man. It's beautiful here. Oh yeah. It's that best spot in the world yeah um, it's up there i have to say it's yeah. close yeah, yeah. Well, where's the best spot rob <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> the same. i thought you were gonna say um down there where you are camden yeah camden town. campbell town campbell town yeah i was born in campbell town what's that i was born in campbell town you really? we can tell yeah, <laughs> 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 yes. no i mean um well our uh, gym's in campbell town yeah is it yeah wow. When next time I come down, I'm coming in to train for sure. Smith and Grange, Gracie Jiu Jitsu. I'm there. There yeah. you go, mate. Um, no, if, if 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 my professional surfing career doesn't take off, then I'll definitely get back into fighting. Uh, for sure, you're just going to surf. Oh, I'd love to, man. I think that's the best job in the world. Travel the world, see beautiful islands, beaches. How good women. of a surfer are you? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know whether I could joke about it yet because, like, like I didn't know if it was for real. Oh, no, <laughs> no. fucking horrible. I mean, I can, I can get up and I can... But we'll there's be, big we'll swells in Dubbo, eh? Like. Oh, massive. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy, Sandy Beach. When they open nice the water Sandy the water Beach flows in Dubbo. Uh, yeah, no, I, I tell everyone all the time I'm the worst sponsored surfboard rider in the world because I've got a guy, uh, Ensley Surfboards. He makes all my surfboards for me. Okay. Yeah, and, and he was making boards for me before I could even stand up. So he's like, yeah, I'll get you a new board. No, don't worry about it. So I go, and he's actually going to let me go in there and make my own board next time, shape it all and do all that, which would be cool. But... um. Yeah, I'm not that good. There'd be no barrels in my horizon. No. Nah. You got a you got a gym up here in the Sunshine Coast? Yeah, Noak oh. Martial Arts. Noak Martial Arts? Yep. And it's a is it a fight team? Is it It's a fight team. Uh we have a we have a bunch of fighters coming out of there. Um, but we also do all the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um yeah, so we do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu every night and then before that we have our MMA classes running every night and then we have midday jiu jitsu as well. I'm probably going to start morning classes if I can find someone to get out of bed early enough and do it because I'm too busy trying to catch that wave. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Find the barrel. Yeah. Are, are, you enjoying, are you enjoying this retirement, running a gym, et cetera, part of your life? Yep. Um, I'm loving it. I, I, I love coaching fighters. Um, I love helping them get, you know, realize their dreams and, and just giving them, I don't know if I'm giving them the tools, actually. I'm just trying to help them as much as I can. <laughs> Yeah, just trying to guide them as much as I can, teach them what I know. Um, a lot of them already, I think, know just as much as me already. So it's just a matter of help helping them in the right direction. So, um, yeah, I, I'm loving it. It's one of the most fulfilling things I've done is, is coach people in their dreams. Mm, that's mad. Yeah. And and uh, what? Where would you think you'd fight if you're going to fight now? Um. Well, if I go back to Dubbo soon, I'll probably fight back there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I don't know at this point, you know. Um, would you want to fight in the UFC, or would oh, you want to, or would you want to have a, a small fight first? No, I don't. I don't want. I don't think I need a tune-up fight. I think I'm, I want to go straight back to UFC. Um, like I said before, the harder the fight is, the, the more challenge I feel. The more I train, the, more, the better I feel going into the fight. You know, make me the underdog every time. I don't care. I want to be the underdog at light heavyweight. For real? Well, maybe heavyweight. For, for real, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. If, if I can put the weight on, I'd do it. How much weight can you put on? I'm trying to find out now. I've started tracking all my macros and seeing, making sure I'm eating enough protein. I found out I wasn't eating enough protein before. How much? How, how, you reckon you can get to uh, 105, 110? Yeah. 
I reckon I do it. I've been up to 110 before. So. And were you fat or? Were you no, no, I was pretty pretty big. I was um, still fighting the middleweight, so I couldn't get too fat. But uh, I'd blown up to 110, I think, or more. But were you like? No, I wasn't fat. You weren't fat. No, I was still like I am now, like ripped. No, I'm <laughs> shredded. Yeah, <laughs> shredded. Oh uh, no, I had a bit of a belly, but not not fat. Not fat. I wouldn't say I was fat. Yeah, just strong. I'd say I'm more strong looking. Should see me at 110. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a ball, like a Swiss ball. <laughs> <laughs> you um, and, and so you genuinely want to fight at heavyweight? I would. Yeah, I, I've. I, like the, the more weight, obviously the more Those weight. Those guys are on. fucking big. <laughs> yeah, they're big dudes. I'm just trying to hard. talk you out of it. No, <laughs> right. I still think I've got a good chin. Um, yeah, yeah, my chin's still there. Have you so. seen Nagano? Yes. That's, That's scary. That dude is scary. Yeah, I'm not going to stand in front of him though. I'm going to take him down and choke his ass out. There are some of those heavyweights that if aliens came down today and they saw us, they wouldn't think me and him are the same species. <laughs> <laughs> some of them, when I see him, I'm like, what the fuck are you? You know, like, what are you? What the uh, fuck is wrong with you? Their skulls dude. are huge, man. Oh. And their hands are massive. Massive. But mine will get big if I get big. How much GH are you going to take? <laughs> man, I just, I don't know. I just want to do it. I just want to I don't do think it. that's how it works, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, do it now. <laughs> You've talked me into it. Do it. <laughs> do it. I'll get there. I'll get there. Heavyweight. Yeah. No, I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to start. Can you thing. get to a point where if, if, I, if when I get to heavyweight, I'm cu- first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and lay on you. No. I'm going <laughs> to start. I'm, I'm going to start a rally. So <laughs> no but, for heavyweight. But I, I want you to get so big, you have to cut. To, oh yeah, to heavyweight. Yeah, I can, I can eat. <laughs> yeah, like you have to be like Mark Hunt that time in Adelaide, <laughs> and you have to be sitting in the hotel foyer in one of those teepees uh-huh. and just dying. Ah, <laughs> oh, how big do you have to be to cut to make that? What is the cutoff for heavyweight? One twenty. One twenty. One twenty. Two sixty-five, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, one twenty. I, I think. think it's one twenty. Yeah, and that's, that's massive. Man, to fucking have to cut there. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Like Mark is such a Mark Hunt. Did, yeah. Would you really want to fight someone like that? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I would. I don't want to, though. I'll, <laughs> I wouldn't fight him <laughs> if really I had an armor guard. You know, there's those, like a, one of those trucks, an armor guard <laughs> truck and a gun or something. And He's he, such a big Remember he did the podcast? Too, Man, when he did the podcast with us and you see him sit next to Rob uh-huh. and it's like two Robs. <laughs> And he's, he's athletic, man. Yeah. And I know he, he looks moves. weak, but he's not. Oh, no, he doesn't look weak. <laughs> Mark, Mark, I didn't say you look weak, mate. No, nah, uh, he's, he's a monster, eh? If he's listening, I didn't say you look weak. There Mark, are some I'm, big dudes. And you can see yeah. the difference to the guys that have to cut down to heavyweight and yep. the guys that don't. It's like <laughs> there is a bam, bam. size is different. Bam Bam as yeah. well. Yeah. Bam, like, bam Bam's huge. Does he cut guy. to make heavyweight? He has to really watch himself. He has to skimp a few meals. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, he's he's a he's explosive for a big guy too, isn't he? He's quick. Yeah, very quick. Fuck man, and he's like he's he's like he's he's like fine motor skills are good. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. He's got really good movement. He's like a really athletic. That, yeah, heavyweight. Yeah, like really athletic. Whereas some heavyweights are just very very big. Yeah, he's like really athletic. Yeah, yeah, he can move. I like and him. he's a fucking giant, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I would see, you don't and, want to fight those. Guys, it hits like a truck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you spar with him? Hey? You train with him? No, I just, I'm just making um, an yeah, educated oh, yeah. guess. Yeah, I, definitely. It could be wrong, yeah. but I, I don't think so. Uh, no, if you can knock out big men, then I guess you hit hard as well. And he's got a hard to head. Yeah. Like, and his his legs are like like that yeah, big. He's, he's Imagine you have to. Sounds like a good challenge, huh? Yeah, man. I don't, <laughs> think, you're gonna, I don't think you're going to be able to single leg him. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, you should do it. It's a good challenge yourself. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, good. Yeah. That's gonna be. Overeem's huge. Overeem's massive. You've been with him like yeah, a I lot. I know. I know. <laughs> lay on me and squish me. That's why I want to get the heavyweight so I can go. Alistair, what's up now? Come on, let's let's wrestle again. You should do it. Yeah, you should do it. I will. I'm gonna try. Fuck Next it time up. you see me, I'm gonna be big. It'll be jacked. It'll be like butterbean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just got the meat sweats all over. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> no, fuck it up. Anyways, hey, uh, Kyle, we're running out of time. Yep, no but thank worries. you so much for coming out. Do you want to tell us if uh, anything else you got coming up, anywhere where people can find you, any other things you've got coming up? No, 
nothing coming up for me until uh, my manager Malky gets back to me. Uh, nothing coming up for me. I have a few fighters fighting soon. Where down, what, down, what down shows? In Hex in Melbourne. Uh, Bevan O'Malley and John Martin Fraser, who was originally matched with one of your guys before the whole fight shard card fell through not long ago. Oh, really? Yeah, he was supposed well, to fight Jacob. Oh, yeah, he was yeah, meant he to fight yeah. Jacob, then Jacob was meant to fight Didier. Yeah. Because something happened. What happened to your guy? The whole fight card fell through or something. Yeah, that, that yeah. one way. No, no, no. But, 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 yeah. but when the yes. fight fell through... Uh -huh. No, the, the fight card. Like, remember the whole fight the, card the got whole dropped. card got canned. So then the we tried before, to we tried max. Yeah, no, no. But th Jacob was already matched with Didier that day. No. no. The, the fight card, the whole fight card went to shit. And then we asked the new promoter contact, said, look, we heard the fight card went to shit. Can we use John? And we went, yeah, yeah. And we said, look, we already had opponent match. They've both been training for each other. Can they fight each other? And they said, no, um, Jacob might be already matched with someone else or something like yeah, that. With, yeah, with Didier. And then when we went on fight night, no, after the weigh-in, uh -huh. they, they canned it. They canned the yeah, whole card. Right. That sucks, man. That's happened to him twice, too. He, sp he was supposed to fight. John Martin Fraser was supposed to fight Didier as well. And, and a couple of what, two weeks before the fight, they rang up and said, no, nah, the whole fight card's cancelled again. Really? Yeah. It's a local fight scene, mate. Who, yeah. Who's he fighting Who's he fighting now down in Hex? He's fighting Nathan Reddy. Oh, he oh, trains really? with us, too, yeah. Reddy. All right. Yeah. He trains <laughs> twi twice a week with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, at Light Heavy, though. At light heavy, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. He trains us a couple of times a week. It's good. Should be a good fight. Yeah. Um, and who who else? What other weight? And who do they fight? Uh, Bevan O'Malley be fighting a lightweight, and I can't remember the guy's name. He's fighting, but Bevan O'Malley's a uh, he's another up and coming guy. F uh, phenomenal uh, mu Muay Thai record. Fought in Thailand, fought all over the place, holding up multiple championships in Thai boxing, and he's making the transition to MMA. He's had a few MMA fights. Um, yeah, he's just improving leaps and bounds, so I can't wait to watch him fight down there as well. What's his name? Bevan O'Malley. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. So that that's your guys, and your gym is Noak MMA in or Noak, Noak Martial Arts uh -huh. in on the Sunshine on the Coast. Sunshine yeah. Coast. Yeah. Shout Richard out to you guys. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Carl. No Thanks worries. a lot. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you, brother. I appreciate no it, man. No worries at all. Thanks, Dave.